Hi, I'm Pav. And I'm Neil. And welcome to the Top 10 of Anything podcast. Let's start the countdown! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. British comedy is well loved and renowned throughout the world. The absurdity of Python, the uncomfortableness of Brent, and the feck arse girls of Father Ted. Some moments, though, can be legendary, and we're about to go through our top tens. First, here's Neil with 10 UK comedy facts. Thank you very much, Pav. So, I was searching away to see what I could find, and I found that last year, Chortland Time Out magazine ran a poll in the UK to find out the top 10 UK comedy moments. So, let's see how the voting turned out and see whether we've got any duplicates. I'm sure we might. At number 10, we had Father Ted and the Cows and Perspective scene. 12% voted for that. Chaos Theory. At number nine, we have Blackadder, Lord Flashheart's entrance. 14% of the votes. Little pierce my foot on a spike. <laughs> <laughs> Eight, Adfab, falling out of the cab, got 15% of the votes. Hands up, who likes me? <laughs> Seven, The Office, David Brent's dancing, got 17% of the votes. He's brought them and he's dropped them. <laughs> Number six is Gavin and Stacey's and Smith's curry order at 18% of the votes. Oh, he'll be back, like the shit terminator. <laughs> uh, number five is the Inbetweeners and Car Friend. Got 19% of the votes. I hear you're a racist now, Father. <laughs> uh, number four, Faulty Towers and Basil smashes his car. <laughs> <laughs> At uh, number three, Dad's Army, Don't Tell Him, Pike. We've got 42% of the votes. Oh, yeah. Brace yourself, Rodney. At <laughs> uh, number two, Vicar of Dibley, Geraldine falls into the puddle. 45% of the votes. <laughs> and at number one, is Only Fools and Horses, and Del Boy falls through the bar with 67% of the votes. Yes, Rodney, but you never said a woman. <laughs> there we go. Just a plethora of fantastic comedy moments already. Mm, already. Already. Now we are here. We've already spoken pre uh, turning on the machines. Turning on the machines. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, we are here. Hat trick hero Rick, top head Rick, is with us. Hello, Rick. Hey, uh, how you doing? We're doing well. We're doing Very well. well. Um, now, this was actually your idea, this top 10, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just it was a weird one. I, did, I I couldn't believe it hadn't been done before. But then again, you know, all all the all the good ones. You think, oh, we should do that. They just sort of come to you, don't they? But yeah, mm. yeah. It was an interesting one, a hard one again, wasn't it? To it do. Well, was I was, was going to say to you, Rick, how hard did yeah. you find doing your top ten? I found it really hard. I found it really hard because I think it comedy is such a personal thing to you anyway. And then obviously there's lots of famous moments, and you think, should I put that in because that's so famous that maybe it's sort of. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's just mm. accepted that it's there. So you, it was a combination of searching for personal things and also what really made me laugh, um, and also the, obviously the classic ones as well. So yeah, it was really really difficult actually. Now I don't know about you guys, but I've only got like say one from a specific sitcom. I mean, only falls and horses. You yeah. could have had easily mm. half a dozen, mo- yeah. you know, top moments. So I've picked out my favourite moment for each one. So I haven't got the same sitcoms in have, uh, have you guys done the same rick have you done the same or have you got i've some... tried yeah i've tried to do the same to be honest um right. i think i've got maybe two from the same sitcom but okay. there's, a re- there's a reason why but yeah pretty much pretty much yeah okay and neil no all mine are different all mine okay. are di- I, I did originally i suddenly looked down um last week or whenever it was and saw that i thought oh hello i've got two from the same sitcom and i did purposely change it yeah so yeah, there's um, yeah. there's going to be a lot of honourable mentions, I think, from I could have chosen this and this and this, but I went for this. <laughs> yeah, I noticed when, when we got some honourable mentions come through, there was a couple that I thought, oh, shit, I should have put that one in. No. Uh, but then the trouble is then you, you're forever tinkering around and you'll, you'll never get it done. So, yeah. Okay, then, Rick, far away with your number 10. Right, okay. My number 10. Um, and again... Could have come with a few from this one, but it's um it's in between it was mentioned in, in the thing we've just played. So the in-betweeners, ooh, friend. 
Um, which I just think is just so. I, I almost put in the one where uh, Jay suggests to go and tr- like drive around uh, the estate. In in this, she was going like tr- drive around the estate and like oh, okay, and he just cuts to him in the car and it's that song going, "Whoa, bitch, get out the way!" And they're going about two miles an hour, which I just think is brilliant. But this one, I just I think it's in there because I love the fact that the roles are reversed and Jay's always the one that's taking the piss and having a go and and he just can't take it when they do it back to him and he just completely mm. loses it at the end of it and starts jumping on the guy's <laughs> car going oh friend <laughs> <laughs> every single time i've ever said anything slightly embarrassing about someone i might know anybody that has watched in between and says oh friend to you. so it's just it's one of those moments that makes me laugh all the time it's become a bit of uh, modern culture, hasn't it? The old yeah. friend. Yeah, you yeah. hear it a lot said. Yeah. But do you yeah. find that with a lot of, I mean, the, I mean, I know I'm a different generation probably, but mm. I'll still call people plonker. Mm. For, yeah. You know, it, and it's just, it, it becomes part of the lexicon it, of what you normally say is as a normal thing, but it's from a TV show or a comedy show. It's crazy how that seeps into like normal everyday conversation. Yeah, well, my my grandpa used to call me stupid boy. Oh, dad's <laughs> army. Yeah, yeah. So, so there you go. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. See, it I've does. only ever watched the in between us once. I've only ever watched the the series once. Now, so when? What year was that? Are we talking about like, ten years ago? Probably a bit longer. Two thousand six. Really? Was that far? Yeah, seven. I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I yeah, don't know whether like it's a sort of thing that will, will that hold up. I mean, it's. I suppose it's just. Well, I think it might because it seems to be replayed a lot on like E4 and everything. They they have whole nights of the in between. Oh, do they? I mean, oh, I was personally think the first two series were fantastic. The third series was just they tried to drag too much out of it. Right. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think I think for me it was the I like lo- I looked at that and that was the first series that was like that's how me and my friends talked to each other and messed around and the stupid mm. thing we said. That's exactly what it was like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's sort of just that's the problem with comedy as well. Sometimes it just jumps the shark all of a sudden, yeah. and you go, "Oh, okay, yeah." I think I mean, pretty much every <clears throat> successful comedy series has that when they start yeah. going to series three, series four, series five. It's almost like they like getting the paycheck, and it just it, it dilutes it a little bit. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gone and Neil, you're number ten. So this oh. sitcom is um, wasn't overly loved by everybody, but I loved it. It's Derek. You loved it as well, Pavo. I, I did. But it's season one, episode four. It's when they go to the beach and Kev writes twat on the crab. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I roared with laughter and it still makes me laugh now. I mean, I think Kev was one of the, probably the best characters in the show. Um, and he, uh, likewise, when he's in Afterlife. And uh, But it is the same character. That's the trouble. Y- yeah, yeah, he's, it, he plays the same character all the time, yeah. but he does it so well, doesn't he? And then yeah. obviously Joe Wilkinson being his brother or whatever it was in Derek. But yeah, that bit at the beach, honestly, I roared. I don't know why it really found my funny bone and it still does to this day. So much so that I went down to Western and wrote twat on every crab I could find. No, I didn't. <laughs> you really should be resting your leg, Neil. You yeah. shouldn't be running around after crabs on Western yeah. Beach. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's with me with Derek, I've always found it like more of an emotional thing than laugh out loud funny. I found well, it like it is, it is. So but there are some very funny moments. Just, oh, yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're a fan of that, Rick? Do you like Derek? Um, do you know what? I think I've, I've seen it once all the way through, it's quite a while ago, and I did enjoy it when I watched it, but mm. I just I've never revisited it, so I need to probably go back and revisit it. But, um, but no, yeah, I, I, I think he's really funny in it as well. and it is one of those ones with heartfelt moments. It's, it's, it's very Ricky Gervais, isn't it? Where yeah, you know, like, yeah. try and mix the two together, which which is kind of a theme of comedy anyway. It's the tragedy and mm. comedy sort of borderline, isn't it? You know. But the agree. other moment I nearly put instead was when he was eating the pickled onion. Yes, just the way he ate those pickled onions in his face was just yeah. perfect, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, my number ten. Um, Matt Berry is one of my heroes, uh, not just comedy, but just jets in general. And I've gone for the IT crowd, and it's when he's Douglas Renham and his electric sex pants. <laughs> so he, he has these pants that give him a shock into his genitals whenever he gets aroused. And I think he's just looking at a sailing magazine or something, and it just keeps going, pss, pss, damn these electric sex pants, in, in his fantastic voice. He, I mean... IT crowd is is great when it, when Chris Morris was in it in the first season. So if when he left to get someone like Matt Berry to sort of take over that role, such as his son, 
was an absolute masterstroke because he yeah. just is it's just the voice his voice is just fantastic so anything with matt berry in it well i say that i still haven't watched what's the what they do in the shadows i still haven't watched oh wow i know it's crazy that is just brilliant i need to watch it because i love the movie the movie was fantastic but i got and the series is just as good is it i've got it very good yeah yeah and then and also matt berry did you see that thing that's going around with the lone wolf did you see that the Lone Wolf. Oh, if you haven't seen that, then and you like Matt Berry, then watch it because it's basically it's a fake docu- document uh, documentary that he's done about the Lone Wolf, and it's right. just his voiceover going, "Ah, here we see the wolf." It's yeah. talking, you know, and it just goes absolutely ridiculous. So oh, you need to look out for you that. Need to check that out. That's, okay. I, that almost made it on my list. Was, right, I've not even yeah, heard yeah. of that. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. If you love it, you will love you will love it. Honestly, if you love okay, it. Yeah. we'll add that to the list then. Uh, Gone then, Ricky number nine. Okay, so my number nine is, um, it's a bit of an, an older one, but again, it's a bit quirky. It's Black Books, and it's uh, the it's the episode with the cleaner, when the cleaner comes around. And um, I don't know what it is about Black Books. It's just, it's a, I really love Dylan Moran anyway. I think he's he just plays this sort of crazy, really angry character all the time. And in this one, it's just really funny. Because um, it's basically, the, the place that he lives is a complete tip. He's a complete slob. And they get this clean around, and um, and before they get him round, um, Manny, who's played by Bill Bailey, I think, turns around. And he's is, like, yeah. This ri- yeah, this is ridiculous. It's like I, I, this morning I ate scrambled eggs with a comb from a shoe. <laughs> 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 oh, this place is fine. It doesn't need cleaning. And then he goes to take a sip of his drink, and it's on a table, and the entire table comes up. And he's, <laughs> he's down. He goes, fine, there's no problem. <laughs> and then the cleaner comes around, and he's like going, oh, it's really dirty. He's wearing this mint green suit. And then he just like puts his finger across the air and shows it him and it's just filled with like dust and crap. <laughs> so it's just, it's completely stupid, but I just think the whole way through, I'm just chuckling away at myself and it's just, it's really, really well written. So I just love it. It's really funny. I, I've, I have to admit, I've never watched a single minute second of Black Books. Oh, you'd love it. Oh, it's the same writers it. as Father Ted, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Is, is. it really? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. his name? Um, Linnerman, oh, um, isn't it? Graham Linnerman. Graham Linnerman. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's and, him. Uh, other one. Well, Graham Linnerman did IT Crowd as well. IT Crowd did, as well. Yeah. 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 Honestly, it's so funny. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, yeah. But it's, um, the oh, what's her name? The, the 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 shop next door. She's really funny in it as well. Um, oh, yeah. Think, what's her name? Um, she's in Friday Night Dinner, isn't she? Tasman, yeah. Tasman Greg. Greg, Greg. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I, I will really have funny. to. I'll have to add that onto the. It's on. List. It's on. You better watch it. It's on the four catch up. Is They've it got every episode yeah, yeah. on there? You'll love it. Yeah, okay. and it doesn't outstay its welcome as a series either. I think it has like two two series or something. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, but it's oh, three. Right. I'm actually looking at it on my shelf. It's oh, right. three. It's three. <laughs> oh, three. <laughs> and it is so funny. And they're strong three series. They're not. Yeah, they, right. don't, they don't dip. And good half. Well, twenty five minutes. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, okay. Episodes. Okay, we'll fun. try that one as well. Excellent one. Uh, go on, the Neil, number nine. So this is, uh, I would love to watch this again. Um, uh, I haven't seen it for a little while, but always remember this, but it's Catterick with Vic, Vic and Bob. Oh. But it's oh. the uh, Matt Lucas entrance. <laughs> kinky boots. Is that the kinky boots? <laughs> Honestly, I raw and raw. Uh, and it's little walk how he does that with those uh, little shoes. It's the just bloopers pure. on this is is fantastic yeah. when he's trying to do it. It's just and crazy. It, and I think it was a great series. I, I always think Vic and Bob should have been allowed to do more sort yeah. of sitcoms, left yeah, of their own great. devices to do sitcoms. Yes. Because that was just pure genius. And But that walk, honestly, every time it happened, it was hilarious, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah. You saying that now has made me realise I've got no House of Fools in my top ten, which, which there's a couple of moments. I don't know if you've ever seen that, Rick. Do you ever watch House of Fools, no, Vic and that, Bob? Man. It was, yeah. it was, it was done in front of a studio audience, a bit like Mrs. Brown's Boys, which we should never mm. mention. Mrs. Brown's yeah, Boys, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was totally Vic and Bob, and it was absolutely ridiculous in certain bits. Matt Berry yeah. again was in it. Yeah, it was in it. Yeah. It was fantastic yeah. in it. Oh yeah, I can't believe I haven't put any of that on there. But oh, that's a great one. Yeah, I need to check that out because I do remember um, Mortimer and Whitehouse when they had that series where it was bef- it was before a studio audience or where they were there was loads of skits. What was it called? Now I can't remember what it was called, but they had they had um, the 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 Mickey take of um, MasterChef on it. Where, yes, where that was oh, yeah. the smell, yeah. the smell of Reeves and Mortimer. <laughs> He's yeah. flying around. Like, That's right. Yeah, the really smell good. of Reeves and Mortimer. Massive bulbous yeah. head. That's, That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then he and, and then he sort of he floated from one part of the studio to another, didn't he? he just stopped floating he just, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. 
So I do, I do love them too. Actually, I need to watch them. I need to watch yeah. those too. Actually. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that I think well, it was on Netflix for sure because that's where I rewatched them. But I think it might still be on there. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll check well, it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, great stuff. Uh, my number nine is Matt Berry again, and it's the Toast of London, um, yeah. and it's in the studio trying to record. Yes. Oh, and just getting the whole bit when and a friend of the show Tim Downey is there behind the uh, behind the glass with Clem Fandango, and he says, "Oh, can you try and do it without the script?" Okay, I'll do it without the script. And he gives it another look. Yes, and he just keeps doing it until he's crying. And then Clem Fandango just says, "Could you maybe try a no?" And then that, that's when it cuts. But it's just so good. So good. No, I, I actually love that. It's the absurdity because I'm I'm in advertising and I've done bits like that, and it is as ridiculous as as that is. Mm. It's Are so you ridiculous. Clem Fandango? Right? I am Clem Fandango. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Real life Clem Fandango. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I, I'm not Clem Fandango. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> And it is that ridiculous sometimes. You just is go, it? Oh, God, just I want this to end now. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God! So you're normally the person on the other side of the glass telling the people how to how to read the copy and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, and and you, and you, and some people are really nice, like you know, and other people are, perhaps aren't as nice. But um, and, and are these through, famous but... people that you're talking? Yeah, talking yeah, about? yeah. So, Most people so, are really lovely, but um, yeah. but then so who's the people that are really lovely? Um, who's the girl out of um? Space, Julia. Is it Julia? Julia. Oh, Julia. Yeah. Oh, Stevens. Not Julia is, Stevens. Is, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I, I think remember that's now. Her name. I think that's her name. She really. Yeah, I really know who you mean. Place. She was in. Um, oh, she's been in loads of stuff, hasn't she? She's yeah. in um, um, Shaun of the Dead as well. What's her name? Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, she she's that family away from the Yeah. Yeah. And um, the royal yes, family, you, wouldn't she? Yeah. You that are really nice. Jessica, but, um, Ste- Jessica. Jessica, it. Jessica Stevenson. Stevenson. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure loads of people listening will be screaming at us. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and there's a few. I, I can't. I can't really mention who's not very nice. But there are there are a few who's not very nice. I can imagine. I will yeah. tell you my ulterior motive. I thought I'll I'll I'll, I'll lure him in with asking who the nice ones <laughs> were, and then hit you with who's the bad ones, just thinking that you might roll them off your tongue. But we totally understand. We totally understand. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was my number nine. So on to you, Rick, for your number eight, please. Okay. Well, we've sort of touched on it, but it's uh, it's Father Ted and number eight, and there's lo- again I could probably reel off. Of- many many different ones mm, there's one yeah. with speed speed two where the in the, yeah. in the middle of the flow is just brilliant um uh, but the one that makes it makes me laugh all the time and i don't know why it just tickles me just like you were saying before neil it, it took on a funny bone is there's the one where they sort of they go on a holiday and father jack just gets loose and he he goes and gets some glasses and then the crow steals the glasses and he's blind and he can't see what he's doing That's and he runs yeah. down the street yeah. and he sees this poster and it just says it's all blurred he just goes drink yeah. <laughs> he's like yeah so he goes in and it's an AA meeting and they're all talking about their problems and he can't understand what's going on and he leaves and then he goes down the street goes in the pub and's like drink 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 and then the guy from the AA meeting sees him runs in and just stops him just short drinking he goes no father you can't I'm not gonna let and just cuts to an ambulance he just goes no 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 it's just like <laughs> It just <laughs> makes me laugh. It's just the way it just abruptly cuts, and it's just so funny. And I mean, it's just a personal thing about. I mean, like, like I said, I could reel off so many different moments, so but that many. one always gets me. Always it's gets. It's one me. of the greatest sitcoms ever written. I think it really is. Yeah, really I think is. for pound for pound, I can't think of a bad Father Ted episode. There is. And I know. Well. They, well, they did three series in there and a Christmas special. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. So they were one of those things where it was obviously cut short because um, Father Ted unfortunately passed away, I mean, but. Yeah, there's so many, isn't there? And classic ones like being lost in the lingerie department. I was literally yes. going to say, yeah, yeah, that's so it's funny. Just pure genius to be written, isn't it? I think this. I mean, although I have got a Father Ted one in my top I mean. ten, um, <laughs> but you're saying about the speed too. It's like when. I love, I love Dougal because he's just so innocent and every time he goes to these women because it was oh what was his name Pat Riley wasn't oh, it it was the oh, fan no, Pat, Pat Mustard Pat, Pat Mustard. Mustard that's right <laughs> and all the women are there with their tops off and, and he just one pint of milk one, yeah. one pint of milk and then he's led in bed at the end and he goes those women were in the nip <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. Oh, it's bless brilliant. Me. I got. I, I, it makes me want to watch that again. I got. I got to start watching Father yeah. Ted from the start. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, go on, Neil. You're number eight. So I'm a big fan of the League of Gentlemen. I know it divides people, but I think it's pure genius. But it's the first series. Is uh, when the police arrive at the local store with Tubbs and Edward, 
um, trying to find the hitchhiker, uh, which they had burnt previously. And as soon as the police speaks to Tubbs, she just turns to him and goes, we didn't burn him! <laughs> it's just the way she delivers it. It's pure, pure genius and, and funny. And I think those guys are comedy legends now. Because Are you a fan of Inside Number 9? You ever uh, I've those? seen... I've seen bits of it, yeah, yeah. I've, I'm, I'm my uh, my mate, uh, funny enough, is absolutely massively into it. She says it's genius. It is absolutely genius because you can have one episode that can make you, in one moment, make you laugh and then really give you the chills and creep you out and scare you at the next moment. Yeah. But yeah, they they are so funny, and I would recommend Inside Number Nine. Watch it from the beginning and go all the way through because I think every episode is a joy. Oh, great! Yeah, but, yeah, but it's not as laugh out funny as League of Gentlemen, which was purposely in your face comedy. But yeah, Tubbs and Edward, fantastic! But mm. yeah, and with the way she counts in the same episode one, two, <laughs> twelve, T. <laughs> <laughs> there is something a little bit unhinged about them, though, isn't mm. there? There definitely is. Um, yeah. I've never, I've like I said, I'm not, a, I've never really sat down and I've got so much TV I need to watch. No, I really yes, do. I, I, I need that chip in my head. I don't genuinely need that chip in my head. And I've but, seen um, them live twice, do League of Gentlemen, and it works so well how they do it. I mean, they do the first act in just as the radio show, it's it started in their tuxes, and then the second act it moves into and Royston Vasey comes down on the stage, and then every character comes out right. to greet you, and it's brilliant. Is That's it, great. Yeah. It's like the, I think it was a bit too a bit too um, unhinged for me when I was that age when it came mm. out. I couldn't appreciate because I was watching, you know, the bit where the guy's cycling down the street and then the dog's just mangled behind it in the opening. Yeah. <laughs> Even that, I was going, "Oh, I'm not sure this is for me. I'm too young for this." Oh, <laughs> uh, what's it was, his name? I mean, Chinnery, the vet. What was the, thing yeah, that, yeah. what was the thing that went, um, hello, Dave? Oh, that's um, the the circus master. The yeah, because that was just like really scary. And I, yeah. I thought, well, I've got your wife now, Dave. Yes, it's <laughs> horrible. Yeah. But it is quite funny when you get through that. And yeah. See, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I need to repraise it now. Now I can sort of get my head around it way more. Very funny. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. Funny. yeah. Um, okay, my number eight. Classic for someone of mine and Neil's age. Uh, Rick, you're a little bit younger than we are. Um, but it's the young ones. So I'm going for the university challenge. That's my uh, number four. Is that your number four? <laughs> With Bambi? Um, yeah. It's just, apart from the fact that you've got people like Stephen Fry, Hugh Laurie, Emma Thompson, at ben the start Owen. of their, sort of start of their careers mm. um, as the, as the Toffs. But just the whole... The whole bit of it is just fantastic with, mm -hmm. you know, who did the smelliest bottom burp and um, just, who, who was it? Was it no Vivian playing with the microphone and it buzzes on him and he's just going, what? Because he's just messing about <laughs> with the microphone. and But it starts really well, that whole section on the train, doesn't it? Where they're yeah. learning. For, it, it, it sort of sets it up there, but yeah, straight into the university challenge. Yeah, no, I don't know, because obviously, I mean, you are a bit younger than us, Rick. So the, the young ones, where does that stand in? I mean, have you you've obviously watched it, I would assume. I've, yeah, I've watched it. I think um, it's, do you know what it is? I think because that sort of, it was so uh, groundbreaking when it came out. A lot of things that followed on from it are as irreverent as that, but that started yeah. it. So yeah. for, for sort of, um, I mean, I'm 40 now. So, so for people who are a little bit younger... They just there's no incentive to see it because there's crazy stuff on at the moment. But but that started it all. So I've seen mm. them. I've seen all of them. Like my 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 dad and my older brother as well are just like they raved about them. They said they were hilarious. And I've seen the University Challenge episode and I've seen all of that. And I just think they're absolutely brilliant. Mm. So yeah, they um I think it's just a little bit just before my time. But I think if I was a bit older when I saw them, they'd be right in that. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I I still watch them, but it mm. takes me back to that time. So it, it whereas. I don't know for somebody watching it with fresh eyes now whether it would just look too dated. Maybe, maybe, but I, I, I don't, I don't know actually. I think it's just, I think they were just such, it's such a trailblazing series that it, it just spawns so many ones like it. There's yeah. almost no need to go back to it now, which is a shame mm. because the, people should. Yeah, absolutely. It's, the social commentary is probably dated a bit, hasn't it? That's all probably. Yeah, uh, that's true, but yeah. some of it's relevant uh, today. But yeah, the giant. Eclair, the, the giant Eclair. I mean, it was so it was so funny, and then all of a sudden, you'd have the Monty Python surrealism bit just yeah. working in. Uh, yeah, it was and you know what? You know, we were saying earlier on about when you say things in normal everyday life. If I ever buy a raffle ticket, now you won't probably have seen this episode, Rick, but I always look at the ticket and go, oh, "This Norman Tebbit better be good." 
Yeah. They, that episode, there's an episode where they're selling tickets to, oh, Rick's trying to sell tickets to make £15,000 or something. He's selling little <laughs> raffle tickets. And then I always say it whenever I get a raffle ticket, well, this. Uh, you know, like you do, though, but it, but it does. It enters into your lexicon because it you does. watch it so much. Do you know what I mean? There's, it just, me and my brother quote loads of things to each other. People listen to this, what the hell are you talking about? You yeah, know? exactly. But other people, if, and, and it's, if you know, you know, kind of yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah totally. Um, totally. Right then, Rick, your number seven, please. Okay, so my number seven is uh, it's The Office. And it's um, it's I mean, there's loads of things you can you can take from it. Obviously, you know, we had the uh, 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 dancing thing in the in the countdown before. Um, loads of classic moments, but the one again, and it's, it's a personal thing that tickles me, and I think it's so well done, is when they're in that nightclub. I can't remember what the nightclub's called now, but they're they're all celebrating. They're going out in a nightclub, and um, and you see Gareth talking to this woman, and he's like, "Yeah, you doing going on like all this stuff," and then this guy's just staring at him, and then he's like, "What are you looking at?" He's like, "I am a husband." He goes, "Oh no, 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 I'm, I'm not into that," and you totally forget about it. And then right at the end of the episode, <laughs> there's just the switch in like in, in the in the focus of the camera, and he's on, he's got a bike helmet on the bike with both of them going off into the night, and he yeah. thinks he's just gone home with them. And it's, just, it's, it's just his face of like, and he's, as he goes away in the helmet, it's just so well done, and it, it's just perfect. I think it's because so it just fun. he goes through the camera, doesn't he? It doesn't like the camera doesn't pick him up. Yeah. It just like you just notice him. That's it always reminds it, me of it. Wallace and Gromit as well. Whenever I see yeah. him, it just yeah. looks like oh, Wallace yeah. and Gromit. <laughs> but it's just the subtlety of it is so brilliant, and and it's and it's his character to a T. And the fact that they leave it for so long before picking picking up the gag at the end is just brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That is a great one. That it is. is a great one. Yeah, The Office just missed my top ten. I must admit, but uh, mm. um, but that is a great one. Go on then, Neil. You number seven. So it's Faulty Towers, but it is Basil loses it and when he starts goose stepping up and down. Now I find that so funny in the way, and obviously it's Duke John Cleese doing the master of his silly walks. Now there is a little caveat to this in how I find it so so funny still to this day. Is one time we put it on, and I think when it was on a re-showing on BBC Two, I was sat with my brother and my dad, and that episode was on. But when it came to the goose step, for some reason it sped up. <laughs> bizarrely it was really quick which then gave it a, a whole new realm of uh, hilariousness to me but well, was I that still... the first time you watched it it did that or was it no like, no no it was an, i'd seen it many showing. times before right, but right. it was just this one time we all settled down my brother would came over he wasn't even living at home back then so this shows that it's a while ago but um yeah we were um just watching it and yeah that bit i've never stopped laughing in my life I just wish we had the sky button of rewind and it would have happened again. Yeah. Because I would have been there all night doing it. But <laughs> but yeah. But that still makes me laugh even when I see it to this day. I mean yeah, yeah. it's probably politically not correct to probably like it. Probably very politically un- uh, incorrect now. But it's but... not about what is it, the substance is about Basil Fawlty and what he's doing. That's all yes, I'm saying. Yeah. And it? almost I suppose you're laughing at the character being being like that anyway. Yes. You? You're, you're, not you're not laughing, laughing at, at him. Yeah, yeah, you're not laughing yeah. with him, you know. No. No. Yeah, I mean, that is but the it's whole still point. very funny. Yeah, very. Yeah, funny. yeah. And I'm not looking forward to this new series. Can I just put that out there? No, I'm not. Well, yeah, that's a mistake. I think very mm. much. I think if ever there's a cash grab, I think that's it. It's right. just why? Why so long? Why is it taking him so long? Yeah. It's probably all the divorces he's had, probably. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got to pay for it somehow. Um, okay, my number seven. Now, this is something that could very, very closely just could have been an outtake because they are almost laughing in this. Now, I'm a massive fan of Some Mothers Do Have Them, and there's a couple of, of scenes that you could have had. But there's one scene in Series 3, I think it was, and um, I can't remember, what's the name of the guy that played Victor Mildrew? What was his name? Um, Richard Wilson. That's Richard it. Wilson. Um, uh, Betty and Frank have just moved house, but they all of their stuff has been damaged, so they got the insurance man to come over to have a look, to price everything up, and it's Richard Wilson. So they sit, so Betty and Frank are sat on the sofa and Richard Wilson sits next to him. And as they're talking, he slowly goes down and you can see that like uh, Michael Crawford and Richard Wilson are trying not to laugh the hardest they can to try not to laugh. Even uh, Michelle Detrice is trying. And I just, I piss myself every time I see this and it's not a particularly funny episode, um, that series isn't particularly fun. I think Michael Crawford got a little bit too much control. Mm. It didn't seem to have the same sort of innocence as the earlier series. 
But that one moment, I watched it so many times, and I, you can see they must have been very close to go, cut, let's do it again. But it's just, it's one of those things. One of those little things like that is a natural movement that's just so funny that it that they just they could only just keep it together. Mm. But yeah, that's that's a classic well, one. I don't know if you're, I mean, again, are you a fan of some of those two albums, Rick? That's a bit, that's uh, even earlier. I mean, it is very early, but again, I think I was I was brought up, um, my, my parents were big fans of comedy. So yeah, that, some others do have them. Um, you know, again, dad's like dad's army and all that as well. Um, on the buses, you know, there was, there was loads of these things flying around. But so I do remember that actually. I do remember it, it's either that's the one that sort of talks like that, doesn't he? Sort of, yeah. that's yeah. Right. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was uncanny. That was yeah. almost like <laughs> Frank Spencer was here. You just need to know what I, I should just retire now. <laughs> <laughs> go on, yeah, tour. No, I, go on. Britain's got talent with your impression. You, you, oh, you, yeah, you, you, should, you did a good. Um, uh, Matt Berry before though, so yeah. I mean, let's, it was one word, but still, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it a few times, and it is good. Yeah. Oh, good. Right then. Okay, uh, Rick, your number six, then please. Okay, my number six is Blackadder, and it's um, it's it's <laughs> it's Edmund Blackadder taking the piss out of Doctor Johnson because he's his diary is he's, he's, he just hates him, and he thinks the diary mm. is useless. And um, it's just some of the some of the words he comes out with that are totally made up that makes Dr. Johnson go, oh, shit, I have got that in the diary. Oh, shit. <laughs> and even, even the bit where he's, he's like, he's finished it and he goes, oh, well, please extend to him my my warmest contrafibularities. And he's like, <laughs> what? Like, contrafibularities? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, a, they're a common word around my way. And then the bit where he's like, God, he's like really upset. And he goes, oh, dear, I'm a sceptic. Flampotic, even compunctuous to accord you such, per- such pericombobulation. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's just so, like, it's just toying with him. And just, yeah. and it's Rowan Atkinson just being so, br- and he, he, even when he's saying it, you can see he's smiling to himself because he's like, I'm just going to say a complete load of bollocks here. And he won't understand what the hell I'm talking about. And yeah, I just think it's great. I just, it really gets me every time. Yeah. And then it right is. at the end of the episode, doesn't, isn't it Baldrick that says sausage? Yeah, sausage, yeah, yeah, yeah. sausage. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that wasn't in the dictionary either. Yeah, yeah, That's very good. It. Just to let everybody know, obviously, all of, all of our top heads on Patreon, I'll put all of these moments uh, in the video playlist so you can watch them to your heart's delight. So you'll be able to see uh, Doctor Doctor Johnson's diary, and you'll be able to see Frank Spencer, Q Rick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It worked quite well. Uh, and Matt Berry, yes, there you go. Yeah. Okay, Neil, you're number six. We've got the we've got the clip for the promo now. Yeah. So that's, that's perfect. <laughs> well, for my number six, all I'll say is I've got cheese. <laughs> okay. okay, that is my number. Four. Four, two, two. That was my number two. Your number two. cheese. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, your, your number cheese. Number cheese. <laughs> your number two. Right, okay. Yeah, that is a, just a genius bit of Alan Partridge there in one. You know, where he reels off those TV shows, you know, monkey tennis and everything like that. It's just pure genius. But also the other line, give me a second series, you shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it is a joy. It is a joy. I know I've now met quite a few people that really don't like Alan Partridge. They find it too uncomfortable comedy. So, oh, wow. But I never, ever found that. I mean, me and Pav have always loved the awkward comedies, you know. Yes, the, yeah. The overlong silences and things like that. But, yeah, so, yeah, no, this I is think... younger generations. They're not finding it funny at all. Oh, no, it's, it's, uh, that, that for me, I mean, it's a number two for a reason because I just, mm. just like you, I, I think it's, it, I, I'd struggle to think of, many comedy situations that are better written with so mm. much like ingenious nonsense in them you know even the bit where he introduces his friend and he just goes this is my friend from there he just goes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's such yeah. a twat and then he orders the wine and he goes oh no can i just kind of just shock you i like wine yeah <laughs> then he chooses That's blue none <laughs> blue none and then demands to taste it yeah <laughs> he gets back to the yeah. car i've been bad lynn i've been bad <laughs> quick drive That's yeah it. Oh, he's no, got, he's um, got cock piss partridge written and put on his, the side of his car, isn't it? Um, I just think Alan Partridge has some loads of funny moments. And a lot of it's been copied now. You know, like the whole Dan 
in yeah. the car park. Yeah. How yeah. many times have people do that now? Yeah, yeah. And that was yeah. that was the original and the best. I can't and, believe I've got I haven't got any Alan Partridge in my top ten. I know. I just looking at it, I can't believe I haven't got that. I mean, I've look, I've got Frank Spencer, Q Rig. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that was a good one, Neil. Well done. Uh, my number six is um, look. We've had a podcast, two hundred episodes on it on uh, this country. Uh, if you want to go, it's it's available on all podcast uh, formats. WTF of this country podcast, and I've gone for the finger up my asshole, mate. Um, <laughs> a bit where uh, uh, Kerry has had a football injury. And uh, is being helped up by all the players. And as he's, she's being helped up, she says that immortal line, I think you've got my finger up my asshole, mate. Uh, or vicar. Or, or vicar, mate, or whatever it? it was. But it's the vicar. That, and yeah. <laughs> poor Shahidi, the look on his face when he realises that he might have done that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And it's just, a, it's a very, very quick line. But it's, for me, the, the moment of this country. Um, again, could have had quite a few mm. moments of that. But that, for me, is mine. Okay, we're halfway through, so it's time for this. Pop quiz, hot shot. Yes, pop quiz, hot shot. Rick is new to this. So uh, it's first one to three, Rick. Uh, You can go first or second. What would you like to do? Um... I'll, I'll go. I'll, I don't mind. I mean, do you want to go first, Neil? If you choose, the... you're the guest. Whichever you're comfortable. For. I don't. <laughs> right, I don't what, mind. I'll, at all. I'll go. I'll go first. I'll go. First. You're going to go not? first. Why not? Okay, yeah, yeah. then here we go. Uh, what was the name of the young ones college when they took part in university challenge? Oh no, I kind of know this as well. And you'll, you'll be screaming at me in your head. Um, (laughs) isn't it? Oh God. Is it scumbag university or something? I'm going to give you that. It was scumbag college. Well done. One to Rick. That that was complete thin air, I think. There we go. Well done. No, that was good. Well done. Uh, Neil. What Don't kind ask of me salad? who the world's stickiest bow is. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of salad did Basil Fawlty find difficult to make for an American guest? Was it the Waldorf? Waldorf salad, yes. One each. Rick, what was the name of the song Father Ted and Father Dougal entered the Eurovision Song Contest with? It's My Lovely Horse. It is oh. My Lovely Horse. Well done. Um, Neil. Uh, name the two IT workers in the IT crowd. I'm not going to know them. They, I can't remember them. It's been such a long time since I've seen the IT crowd, I wouldn't know. I'm, no? No. Can't okay, remember. well, Rick for the win. Uh, is it... So it's Roy and Moss? Well done, Roy Rick. and Moss for the win! Wow. A well quick done. and cheeky 3-1 win there. Yeah. Well done. I'm just going to go through a couple more of these, see if you know any of them, just, for, just to shout them out if you know them. What is the name of Smithy and Nessa's son in Gavin and Stacey? Neil. It was Neil, yes. I didn't know that. That was weird then, because on the screen then, Rick, that looked like you looked up at Neil then when he said that. <laughs> that was like that was like Partridge Family or, or, or Celebrity Squares then. Just as he said that, that was amazing. Um, what was the name of the school which was attended by Simon, Will, Jay, and Neil in the in between us? Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, I, I can't. Remember. I don't know. Yeah. It was Ridge Park Comprehensive. Okay. Oh, great. In which BBC sitcom did the phrase, I don't believe it, become famous? <laughs> uh, one was, foot in the grave. One foot in the grave. It was, yeah. it was. In which show would you encounter Daffid Thomas? Daffid Thomas? Is that the. Um... Matt Lucas, what was that they did? Oh. I can't remember what they called their show because I never watched it, but was that the um, Only Gay in the Village bloke? It oh, was. Oh, you're right. Um, um, Little Britain then, yeah. Little Britain, Little it Britain. was Little Britain, yes. And the last one, which English county is the Vicar of Dibley based? I'd say Devon, but I don't know. It's not Devon. Neil, do you want to oh. have, a, have a guess? Berkshire. It wasn't. It was Oxfordshire. Uh, it was but well done well done Rick yes, for well winning done, Rick. there I mean I think I was quite lucky because I didn't know any of those other questions <laughs> <laughs> you could have asked me to do an impression of um, the guy from some others do have him by the point. well I mean that, that would have been the uh, that would have been the um, tie break if we'd have been exactly, too all yeah. <laughs> but well done okay back to the uh, the job in hand so Rick you're number five please okay my number five is uh, it's Phoenix Knights 
<clears throat> and it's um it's basically Brian romancing Beverly. So when right. so he he's obviously he's he, you know Brian Potter in a wheelchair. He, he's he runs over this girl's foot and then they start sort of seeing each other. And it's just it's honestly it's a little bit like asking Brian Potter to be romantic is a little bit like asking. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo to be you know modest it just yeah. doesn't work um and yeah. it's just so funny all the way through and there's there's I mean there's two scenes here but I'm, I'm gonna cheat a little bit but they're, they're both I couldn't separate them out but they're when they're in the restaurant and they're talking to each other and then you know, they're having a nice sort of thing of oh, you taste this oh you taste this great and then the lady with the flower flowers comes over and says oh would you like a flower for the lady and he just goes fuck off <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but keeps a complete straight face when he says it yeah and then the, when the second bit is when he's taking her home and they're in the stair lift and they're going so slowly up the stairs he's going oh i'm gonna what i'm gonna do to you just give <laughs> away just give away what i'm gonna do <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that just that just absolutely is brilliant. I think it's hilarious, and I could again, I could have chosen a, a few. Oh, few absolutely, yeah. I can't say too much about it. No, no, I got a funny feeling about that. <laughs> so, because I know that you you like that moment, don't you? Neil? I just find like it that. so funny. It's so that funny, was, and and honestly, yeah. even watching the series is, I think, is it's, again, it's two seasons, and it's mm. two series, two series doesn't outstay its welcome no but the outtakes are almost as funny as watching absolutely. the series absolutely yeah. yeah it's all the but, auditions at the end which very nearly made my top 10 oh, they're no, just as yeah. funny you know the Nelly the Elephant it's the two old people ballroom dancing yeah and it's that bit where he lowers it down and just goes hey <laughs> <laughs> you can tell they're all properly laughing yeah 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 and the the, the, the one with the ping pong balls oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, we've got a Neil, your number five. So it's Blackadder, but it's Blackadder 2, and I will say Big Booze Up, which is oh, yeah. beautifully performed <laughs> and beautifully written. Um, the ex- explanation was Miriam Margulies is his uh, wicked aunt. Wicked child. Wicked and, child. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's that bit when he comes in drunk, uh, uh, when the guy gate crashes in. Is it? I think it's Hugh Laurie, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so, yes, great yes. boobs up, yeah, yeah. and with his um, commony breasts on. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the explanation that he comes out with about how he's got this Indian in the um, other room, <laughs> who was big boo, yeah, big yeah. boo, has finally woken up. I just think it's genius, genius writing, very, yeah. very funny. But the Black Adders were very funny, apart from the first series, which had moments but wasn't. Yeah, that's true. The, the first series, they cast him as the snivelling idiot and Baldrick as the clever oh. one, and then they just went, hang on a minute, let's do that. That's miles yeah. better. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. the introduction, is it, of um, Ben Elton, wasn't it, I think? Was it, yeah. right? I, and I think it was only st- Richard Curtis that, and Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, he took a step there. back from the writing, didn't he? And, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Ben Elton yeah, came in for the good. second. Very good. Very good. Uh, okay, so my number five is Father Ted, and it is I Hear You're a Racist Now, Father Ted. <laughs> It's That's not just that. Three. Is that your number three? <laughs> oh dear me! Oh. It's it's not just that whole point where he's everyone thinks he's a racist. It's the bit when there's that a that, that a fantastically square bit of black dirt on the window, yeah. and he's going, "That's physically impossible. How can there just be a square bit of black dirt?" And then the, the, the Chinese guy is coming up and he's looking at him through the window and, and Father Ted is gesticulating and all this with this black bit just going perfectly over his top lip. And he's going, oh, look, he's just walking off now. He's walking off with his hand up in the air and it looks like he's doing it. No. It was just so crazy, but it's just fantastic. Um, video um, playlist, watch it for that moment mm. if you've never seen it. I mean, all the sections where he caught, gets caught being racist, it's just hilarious, isn't it? With the, yeah. the lampshade. The lampshade. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you wouldn't be able to do that these days, would you? You wouldn't even be able to no. do that on the context of comedy these no. days. Yeah, you it would just know. be frowned upon and, oh, you can't you can't say things like that, you can't do things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. Ev- and then he buys things from 
habit hat or something, doesn't he? And then he gets there That's and it. it's, it's the other father's, all his Nazi stuff up on the wall. She's decorated, like Mrs. Doyle has decorated the whole thing as well. Yeah, and she's so pleased with herself that she's yeah. got it all done and all decorated, yeah. new curtains, and it's all swastikas everywhere. I, I think there's a moment where Father Jack just, just is dressed in a Nazi uniform, just That's gets out of the thing in the room That's and they're in there, just walks <laughs> off and they're like, what the oh, hell? It's so good. Oh, it's it is so good. Yeah. Okay, that was my number five. So, Rick, you're number four then, please please okay my number four is uh it's the it crowd and it's um it's Renham suicide when he jumps out the window right yeah right. <laughs> so i just i mean it's really simple straightforward but this is all about um chris morris's physical attributes and his acting and his physical comedy because if you think of anyone else it's just i mean if anyone doesn't know obviously there's a big board meeting Renham sat at the front and um, they're all chatting away going, oh, we've made mega profits this year, haven't we? Yes, of course we have. It's brilliant. They're all chatting away. And then his secretary comes in and goes, oh, excuse me, Mr. Renham, there's, um, the police are here. There's some irregularities with the pension fund. He goes, I see. Um, would you make, to make them a cup of tea, please? Okay, thank you. And then he just meet. He doesn't, there's no beat or pause. He just gets up immediately, walks to the window, and in one motion almost opens and jumps out. Yeah. yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't even, it's the way he jumps out slightly askew on an angle. <laughs> But and he also his, 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 his arms are right by his side. His arms are right by jump. His he just, like, he's just bloop, like a like a <laughs> lemming. Yeah. It's absolute it just gets me every time. And it's just it's the perfect sort of ending to a character that that's as bonkers as he is. And I just mm. think it's brilliant. And and then obviously, like you say, the genius move for that was to was to get Matt Berry in to, to replace him. And and I, I just think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's so funny. good. Chris Morris is a genius and I miss him wholeheartedly. He needs to do something new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brass, uh, the day to day of Brass Eye was yeah. just perfect. I so wish good. he was around now to be doing that. Yeah. There's yeah. so many people that deserve to what be does he, Chris what Morris. What is he doing? What yeah. does he do with himself? Not a lot. He's got that awful skin condition, hasn't he? So yeah. he doesn't come out so much yeah. now. Yeah. That's what I last shame. read. Very yeah, talented. He was, I mean, the fact that he started at a Bis- Bristol BBC, have you heard the story where he they were reading the news and he was getting ready for his show, so he leaked all the um, helium into the BBC newsroom oh, while right. they were reading it. <laughs> so everybody <laughs> listening on BBC radio uh, could hear the newsroom just getting higher and higher oh and my higher. Oh, God. He's so good. He is a genius. Absolute genius. talent. Yeah, absolute really talent. is, yeah. Um, okay, so and, uh, your number four, Neil, was University Challenge with the it young was. ones. Uh, my number four is Faulty Towers, and it is Finding the Light Switch. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this bit. This is um, this <laughs> this cracking looking Australian woman, and she's just uh, she's just got there. She's looking for somewhere to eat. Uh, but unfor- unfortunately, her her bathroom light isn't working, but she's just doing a bit of stretching. So she leans up against the wall and then Basil Fawlty is leaning around to try and find the light <laughs> switch and is just tickling the nipple a little bit. And then that's, of course, when Sybil comes in and she says, look, at least if you're going to grope a woman, at least have the decency to be in the same room as her. <laughs> and it's just perfect comedy timing it's fantastic and i mean she's a, she's a cracker she's a, a real cracker that woman <laughs> all right frank Cass. I feel like i need to watch this <laughs> <laughs> and i think isn't there a bit later on in it as well when he's got black paint and he he, he again like she's she ends up with like a yellow leotard on or That's something it. and there's just a black a mark around one of her boobs <laughs> ah so good so good so good um okay then rick you're number three then please Okay, my number three, and I've slightly cheated here because I've gone for a whole episode, okay, um, a whole which, episode. Is, which is kind of cheating. But um, but the re- the reason is is because it's um it's Red Dwarf and it's Polymorph, and I just think um I was is that being... the backwards one is it? I can't remember which one that is. No, no. Polymorph. So that that was also very good. But this is the the alien spoof one where they oh, were, yeah, it's on yeah. the ship and. And I, I I used to love it. I mean, the first two seasons were 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 good. They weren't they were okay. But then three to six, I think, was at the time some of the best comedy on TV. I thought it was amazing. And this one is just, if no one knows, it's like the polymorph. It's just straight up Mickey take of aliens. So there's this there's this alien, and it's like what it does is instead of attacking you and killing you, it sucks out your emotions. So it just and and it's it's almost a send up of horror movies in itself because everyone sort of loses IQ points in a horror movie like they, they run upstairs when they should run outside and this just mm. runs with it and goes okay well we're going to take you know the anger from one character the guilt from another the vanity from another and I think the um, oh, what was it it's anger guilt vanity and fear so basically they're all over the place and Lister just wants to go out and just twat it like he says <laughs> Rimmer, Rimmer wants to do flyering and sing songs to it. 
The cat just wants to drink himself to death and Crichton keeps like like selling everyone out left, right and centre. And it's just brilliant. It's just so funny. And all the way through, there's so many good moments. But I just thought mm. I'd put that one in there as a whole thing, yeah. But you're quite right. It was one of those series that took a, took a little steam to get going. But once it, it did, hit the yeah. round, ground, it did, it, did. it did so running, didn't it? Did you yeah. like the newer Red Dwarfs? When it was I just... really can't stand them, no. I, no, I, just, think, I just think that they've... When you talk about jumping the shark, I think I mean it's just it did it a long, long, long time ago, and I don't. Un, I mean, I get there's the nostalgia point of view, but it just the characters have just become caricatures of themselves, and it's not. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I think actually there was two writers. It's a little bit like when Ben Elton joined Richard Curtis for Blackadder. This one lost a writer after That's season right. six, and mm. it was um, I think it was Ed By or was he the director? I think, but one of any one was Naylor and um... that's right, Doug Naylor and Rob Grant. Group Grant, so Rob it? Grant left, and then Doug mm-hmm. Naylor became the, the the writer, and it just became a bit. He need he needs the other guy, I think. So mm. yeah, but I just yeah. love I love I love that episode. Yeah. I just I can watch it all the time and rewatch it all the time. Yeah, never yeah. never ever got into Red Dwarf. No, yeah, no. yeah it's, great... it's quite polarizing. It's quite yeah. polarizing series. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very strange. But yeah. uh, okay, I'll have to see if we can get the whole episode on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and it might just be clips, but. Uh, yeah. See what we can do, uh, right, Neil? So your your number three was uh, I'm a racist Ted. father, father <laughs> yeah. Ted. Uh, so my number three is Phoenix Knights, uh, and it's uh, somebody that we've met, Neil. You actually got a a, a birthday message from him. I it's did. Clint, Clinton Baptiste, Baptiste and yeah. I'm getting a word nonce <laughs> uh, that whole section yeah. and the, the look of horror on um, uh, Peter Kay's face on Brian Potter's face when he realizes, oh no, what have I done by booking this? <laughs> and it was, oh, what, what was, what was his, his nemesis? Adverse. Yeah. Um, oh, with the cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Slaps him on the thing, doesn't it? Great book in mind. Great yeah. Book. Cause that's, cause that's who recommended the booking, wasn't yeah. it? What was his name? <laughs> oh God. I'm gonna have to look this up. I know it was yeah. Ted. Ted, Ted, Ted. Robin? No, not Robin. Ted Robbins. Robbins. Was the, but was that wasn't the character's name, was it? That was the actor. And it was, oh, God. He, oh, he's, he's there from the opening um, yes. episode, isn't he, when he yeah. recommends the racist folk band. That's yeah. right. Gets That's them to right. play that. I, uh, sorry. Oh, I can't even, I can't, yeah. I can't yeah. Find it. yeah, I know exactly who you mean, yeah. He, he sounds like a pub landlord. So. Right, he does. Yeah. Because he's there all the time, isn't he? Just antagonising Brian, and yeah. obviously sets fire to the club. Yeah, with yeah, a cigar, doesn't he? Yeah, but yeah, that is a great moment. That is um, Clinton Baptiste. Doesn't the guy? Doesn't the guy jump up and start leathering him as well? <laughs> he just said it. He just he stands up and goes, "Wow!" <laughs> yeah, don't you shoot see the messenger. Don't shoot yeah, the messenger. Yeah. It's the Den, big dramatic. Den Perry. Den, Den Perry. Perry. That's Perry. Name. Perry. Perry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, Clinton Baptiste, all that big dramatic opening. He comes out this morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just telling everybody everything they don't want. Yeah, 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 so good, so good, and fantastic live. We went and saw yeah. him last year. Really? Yeah, yeah was it was it? last year. He was absolutely fantastic live. Oh, so right. good. So Brilliant. good. Very I highly recommend. Very un PC in certain parts, but, but very so open. good. So I mean, a lot of it is scripted, but he's brilliant at taking it off script. Oh yeah, as well. absolutely. He's so right. clever at the improvisation stuff. Yeah, so good. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, uh, so that was my number three. So Rick, your number two was I've got cheese. Yeah, uh, Alan Partridge. So Neil, yep. what's your number two? Now this might be cliched, but having spent the whole of lockdown watching all of Ho- Only uh, Fools and Horses, it's the fall through the hatch in Yuppie Love. I think it's pure comedy gold it is the more you see it and how david jason stays so bloody straight in the fall it's yeah. just fantastic i mean yeah i spent the first lockdown i borrowed i went got it off my mum and dad they've got the complete box set of all the all of them watched them all in order um and just realized how bad the last episodes were but yeah, yeah. that episode of going through the hatch is a great episode and that's when we sort of had a re-emergence of great Only Fools and Horses, yeah. again, didn't we? So we had yeah. all those sort of classic episodes coming through. Because they were that's that season, they were like forty-five minute episodes. That's right, they? yeah. But well, they yeah. really that's yeah. quite yeah. long for, for for that for about then, yeah. I guess. Yeah, know. they were like they were like six, almost six <clears throat> specials. Because the, the the episode after that, I think, was when he was trying to sell those wigs, and he had like the sex dolls that blew up. 
Was that the episode? Yeah, it was the episode after I think because there was like, a, was... That, that was a massive, like, he went, oh, no, my wigs are going bold. And all of a sudden, like, those 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 things started blowing up and there was like all these women popping up behind the bar in, in their thing. Yeah. And we also had the um, holiday episode, which I always talked yes. about. It was in the same... Oh, I, I think um, that's genius, that, actually. Yeah, where well, he's in the kids' club, isn't it? That's yeah. it. He's sexually wrong and he's just pretending to be a 15-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. good. No, that is a good one. Um, and I'm surprised I mean, no one else has had it yet. Yet, yeah. I say. Yeah. Um, okay, so my number two uh, is Blackadder 2. And you mentioned it, I think, in the facts, Neil. It's Lord Flashheart. I mean, anything... With Rick Mail as Lord mm. Flashheart, whether you class it in uh, mm. uh, Blackadder Goes Forth, but but in Blackadder Two was the best. Um, yeah. Was without shadow of that, he just stole the whole series just in his five minutes mm. that he was on. And screen. that was the first episode of that series as yeah. well. Bells, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and it was just yeah because it was um, with Bob, wasn't That's it? it? Bob, oh, Bob, yeah, man. yeah. Oh, you just can't. I mean. Yeah. And if you watch it now, I, I never noticed it before, but you can actually see, see his moustache coming off. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah. 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 yeah, it absolutely <laughs> yeah. flaps. Yeah. But I love yeah. the fact that he just carries on. Yeah. <laughs> he just carries on with it. Yeah. But it, you, it almost felt like he was a big special star guest in that. Mm. Obviously, yeah. uh, as being a, a sort of a comedy legend from the young ones and stuff. But it was just, he just doesn't care. He's just totally going for it yeah. and and being as as rick male as you can because i've read somewhere that a lot of that is improvised you know about all the oh and yeah doing was... all of that was just rick male's improvisation yeah yeah wow. high nursey firm and fruity oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something's hit the mark when you go to because that came i was still at school when that came out just but everybody went to school the next day and you had everybody down the sort of the corridor or wherever you are. All you could hear was time and time again. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. 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 It used to yeah. be, for me, it used to be a thing. We'd watch it because it used to be on Thursday night. Thursday nights. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And the same as like young ones. Young ones used to be, was it a Monday night or a Monday Tuesday night? night? Yeah. Monday. Monday night, nine o'clock, BBC two. We, mm-hmm. I'd watch it. Videotape it, Rick. No videotapes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, videotapes yeah. were well versed, yeah, you youngsters. <laughs> um, and then watch it like get up early in the morning. You know, fuck doing homework. I wouldn't do that, but I get up early to watch the young ones again twice, so that I could go to school and then you'd be able to recite it. Because if you yeah. could recite it, yeah. you you would. Oh my god, look, he knows how you know everything that Rick says and stuff. And it was one of those things. Yeah, yeah. no, recording it on tapes is like we, we used to. We did we did the same with Red Dwarf. We did the same with. Um, what else do we do? Can't remember now. There was loads anyway. There's loads yeah. of tape, and and I used to miss. I miss the days of like you watch some a series on tape, and you start with the first one, then the second one, and the third one in, you sort of miss the the start a bit because you you just got back a bit too late, and yeah. it starts like five minutes in, and you get and you always miss the start of one. It's funny. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. crazy. Right then, before we reveal our number ones. Uh, let's have our rundowns, please. Uh, Rick, if you do your 10 to 2, Neil, do the same, then I'll do the same, and then we'll reveal our number ones. Sure thing. So my number 10 was The Inbetweeners. Uh, number 9 was Black Books, uh, the cleaner episode. Uh, number 8 was Father Ted, and it was Father Jack on um, AA, I'm not Alcoholics Anonymous. And 7 was, and uh, trying to find it, Where's my seven? Where was my seven gone? The office. Oh, there we go. Thank you. The office. There it <laughs> is. Okay. It's at the top. Couldn't find it. So it's the office. <laughs> and it's uh, Gareth going on his bike. Uh, number six was Blackadder, and it was Dr. Johnson with his with his uh, dictionary. Number five was Phoenix Knights, uh, Brian Romance in Beverly. Number four was the IT crowd, Renham jumping out the window. And number three was, and I've written on my notes below the place, it was Red Dwarf, Marooned, uh, sorry, not Marooned, Polymorph. And then number two was Alan Partridge uh, meeting Tony Hayes. Lovely. Go on then, Neil, you'll tend to two. So number 10, I had Derek, twat. <laughs> nine, <laughs> nine, Catterick, kinky boots. At number eight, League of Gentlemen, we didn't burn him. At number seven, Faulty Towers, Goose Steps in the Germans. Number six, Alan Partridge, I've Got Cheese. Number five, Blackadder 2, Big Booze Up. Number four, The Young Ones, University Challenge. Number three, Father Ted, Racist Ted at the window. Number two, Only Fools and Horses, Falling Through the Hatch. And that's it. 
Thank you. Uh, my number 10 is the IT crowd, Douglas Renham and his electric sex pants. Nine was uh, Toast of London and yes. Eight was the Young Ones, <laughs> University Challenge. Seven, some mothers do have them with the sofa. Six, this country with finger up my asshole. <laughs> Five, Father Ted. I should have said some others do have them. Hit it, Rick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded a bit painful that time. <laughs> that sounded more like finger up my asshole. Yeah. Like, yeah. Some yeah. others do have them. A combination of both of them. <laughs> uh, five was Father Ted, I hear you're a racist. Four, Faulty Towers, Finding the Light Switch. Three, Phoenix Knights and Clinton Baptiste. And two, Blackadder 2, Lord Flashheart. So, Rick, what is your number one UK TV comedy moment? Okay, so I did say I'd have two from one uh, series, and it's Blackadder, and it's the it's the end of um, Blackadder Goes Forth, Goodbye. And I know that this um, is a, a slightly tragic sort of ending, but honestly, I think we said before, like there's a real fine line between comedy and tragedy, and it's just, it's that moment where you think, oh, you know, he's going to get out of it. He's going to get out. It's Blackadder, he'll get out of it. It's fine. And then And then he tries all these different things. It doesn't work. And even Lord Melchett sends Darling to the front line because, you know, it's just some warped sense of loyalty. You've been really good yeah. to me. I'm going to send you to glory. Well done. And then he arrives and he's like, oh, and he just does the thing, obviously, of like, hello, darling. Yeah. <laughs> he arrives again. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I just think that, and, and I know it's like, it's 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 not laugh out loud, haha comedy moment, but in terms of an actual comedy to tackle something like that in, in the way it does, um is really really powerful actually and just the mm. way they go over the top and then the slow motion and then it and then it fades to the poppies and then it ends and you just think bloody hell that was that was a bit that was quite good for a comedy <laughs> series <laughs> so i mean yeah it's, I, I, I struggled actually i took it in and i took it out and i thought no i think that deserves to be there mm. so yeah, yeah. That's and it's got some ever so funny lines before the big push yeah. it's got yeah. some great comedy before it yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for bringing everything down, down, Rick. Thanks for really bringing the <laughs> bringing the comedy down by talking about like mass death. Thank I you. know, I know, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, that's that's just how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, that was where the whole yeah. Wibble came from, wasn't it? Because he tried to to, yeah. to be sort of signed out Pencils by being up the nose. mad. Pencils, Pencils up on the nose and, and everything. Yeah. Yeah, he tries his hardest, and even uh, Baldrick, where he goes, "Oh, I've got a cunning plan." He goes, "Well, it's a bit too late now, Baldrick." And it's like it might that might have saved them. You never know, but it's just. He never mm. found out what his cunning plan was either. Well, because so. uh, when they're waiting to go over the top, doesn't Baldrick say, "Core, look at that big splinter on the yeah. on the thing yeah. that someone could really hurt yeah. themselves That's with it. that." <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then also, um, I think uh, it's Hugh Laurie, isn't it? Where he goes, uh, George, he goes, "Oh, um, don't forget your lieutenant stick," and he goes, "Yep, yeah, wouldn't want to face a Nazi machine gun without this." <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's it. <laughs> so great uh, great funny moments yeah. moments of uh, beauty as well in that episode yeah exactly i think so, that yeah. is the beauty of really good comedy is it can mm. like say ricky gervais does it well is it can turn yeah. you from laughing to to just crying in a split second and that's what that does with that shadow absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely and plus the the comedy moment before was me just losing my way and all of my lists yes. all over the place so <laughs> i kind of already got there haven't i <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Neil, your number one, please. I think I know what it is. I think you'll know what it is. It is Brian Potter's uh, romance or trying to romance. <laughs> yeah. It's the whole montage bit is just perfect. You know, from the, like Rick said, from the rose being told to fuck off, the bit when they're feeding the ducks in, in the <laughs> when she has to push him out. Um, I mean, it's all just genius. And that stair lift bit is the things I'm going to do to you and the <laughs> slow bit up. Because it all starts with that wonderful when he puts on um, Marvin Gaye, doesn't he? That's right. Yeah. The music in his, his jukebox. But he asks her if she's got the money for the jukebox. Yeah. Oh, it's just genius. It really <laughs> so is genius. Boxes, and yeah. I actually think the more I see Phoenix Nights now, the more I'm thinking it's one of the best sitcoms. Oh, um, I, I actually think, that, yeah, definitely. Mm, definitely. It's mm. just so funny. Yeah. And I really, I really wish Peter Kay would let Channel Four re-release it. it I know it's crazy that it's not on any streaming services, no. is it? Fortunately, I've still got it on DVD, so that's how I watch it. But so have I. So have I. Yeah, I think yeah. it's. Um, I, I, mean, I couldn't agree more. I think it's hilarious, and I think yeah. just. I mean, I, I do think the first series is the funnier of the two. If yeah. I was pushed, but they all have great moments, and then Max and Paddy was a bit hit and miss, but. Yeah. Again, still had some great moments. Yeah, and again, the, the outtakes in Max and Paddy are great as well. Mm. There's some really yeah. good outtakes in those. Yeah. I love watching those kind of things. Um, okay, well done. Uh, my number one uh, is Only Fools and Horses. It's not Dale falling through the bar. Um, again, could have had so many different Only Fools. I mean, 
um, Yellow Peril uh, with the the Yellow Wars of the Chinese Takeaway, yeah. which is a great one. Um, you, I could have also had the, what I can't remember the name of the episode, but it was the poker one. Yeah. When Boise, oh, yeah. you know, he's one, got yeah. four aces. You got four aces. I can't believe you can count as well, Boise. And he tucks him up for loads of money. <laughs> but it's going to be the chandelier drop, um, yeah. which for yeah. me is just so beautifully done and brilliantly written. And you don't even, I mean, thinking about it now, you think, well, it's obvious that that's what's going to happen. But I can remember watching that for the first time and just thinking, just the shock of it. Mm. You know, poor old granddad. And you, it's brilliantly cut together so you think there's no problems at all you know brace yourself rodney you know brace it yourself yeah. <laughs> oh it's just so good it is so good um i, I also like... i also like that episode where they were um batman and robin mm, and yes were running through the smoke as well i love that yeah. one that's a great Heroes, one. yeah yeah that was another great one iconic because they, because... well they rock up at the few at the wake don't that's they? right yeah that's because right they've been told it had been fancy dress it's just funny and it's it's a <laughs> Because they say it's the bit when they say it's a trigger, isn't it? Um, oh, I wish we'd known it's fancy dress. And he goes, "What? It's not fancy dress." <laughs> and he's all in a black suit and tie. <laughs> just genius. Uh, uh, so we have got some honourable mentions. Let me just go through these. Uh, Karen Clark said, "Del Boy falling through the bar and only fools and horses." Uh, Nancy Trickell says, "Monty Python: The Argument." Monty Python: Ministry of Silly Walks. Ab Fab: Adina comes home drunk from a cab. Uh, Ab Fab: La Croix, Sweetie. I say I, I don't know much about Ab Fab, so I'm not yeah, sure yeah, exactly yeah, what that yeah. is. Uh, Miranda Tuesday as well. Now that was when she's going. I, I'm not a big fan of Miranda either, but she's trying to. There's a recorded voice message, and she's trying to say these words. And Tuesday, I did look that one up. Uh, Mary Walker, James, Victoria Wood, and Julie Walters in their shoe shop sketch flatter now so i've never seen that so i don't know at mpg underscore 1980 said way too many but off the top of my head peep show in turkey mm. father father ted explaining perspective to douglas using oh, sheep yeah, that's genius uh phoenix it's Knight. cows isn't it not sheep it was cows yes yes these are very no these are very small but those are very that's far, far away. away that's it Phoenix Knights, Brian stuck on the chairlift. You must have shit yourself. League of Gentlemen, any scene with Mr. Chinnery, the vet. And Del Boy falling through the bar is an all-time great. At uh, Good, the Bad, and the uh, the, bud, the Good, the Bad, and the Dugly, mm-hmm. the ones that jump to mind this country, T is for tomato. In between us, thanks, Phil. Alan Partridge, Goldfinger. Cuckoo, Ken and Cuckoo Dance. Never watched Cuckoo. I think you guys That's watched Cuckoo. Greg Davis, isn't that it? That is Greg uh, Davis. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It was Taylor. Yeah. It was. Da- oh, hang on. Taylor no, Wartner, I... wasn't it to start yeah, with, or Andy it. Samberg? One of the Andy Samberg was in the first series, wasn't he? I think mm, was it Taylor yeah. Lautner? Yeah. And then it was Taylor Lautner series season after. No, the only one I saw of his sitcoms was Man Down, and that was funny. Uh, that was funny. R- yeah. oh, Rick Mail again. <laughs> um, he said, "My family, innocent pedestrians." Now I honestly can't believe there's anything funny in my family. Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I know what you mean by that. Uh, Peep Show, Chance would be a fine thing. Uh, Gavin and Stacey, Islands in the Stream, Vicar of Dibley, the Easter Bunny Reveal, Fresh Meat, Howard and Sabine, uh, The Office, Start of Series 2. Now I was trying to think what happened in the start of Series 2 of The Office. Don't ask me. <laughs> it's, quite ge- Don't it's, ask it's, it's quite generic, though, isn't it? I mean, that is. I mean, how much of the start? Is it just the, the opening credits? You'll have to let us know, uh, Doug, on that one. Um, and he says, can't wait to hear this one, guys. Thank you very much, Doug. We will be Thank speaking you. to you uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, Maria Pereira uh, says, uh, the IT crowd, Peter File conversation yeah. mm-hmm. at uh, Jen's dinner party, which is great. Uh, also, IT Crowd Series 2, Episode 1, The Workout In. Honestly, the whole episode, but especially Roy using the wrong toilet, must be a mistaken for a theatre employee. I'm not doing it justice. It's absolutely hilarious in the most awkward way. So there you go. So thank you very much. We've done it. Yes, thank We've you. We've done it, Rick. Yeah. We've now Thanks. worked out that Rick now will be on uh, Britain's Got Talent for his fantastic <laughs> yeah. impersonation. You can have a double have act of Britain's impressions. Got... Of Frank yeah, well, after having watched Britain's Got Talent recently, I think I'll probably win it. I right? think you probably <laughs> will. Probably. Yeah. I think all we need to have is like you one side of the stage, me the other side, you go in... <laughs> Ooh. Yes. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll I mean, sample that and make a dance track now. Yeah, what yeah. they need to do is they need to do a male sex robot and they have that as the voices. <laughs> they have Rick going, ooh, and me going, yes. And that's yeah. it. We'll make a fortune, Rick. We'll split it 
We'll make 50 series of it, yeah? We'll make 50 <laughs> series of it, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, before we say our goodbyes, Neil, do you want to tell everybody how they can get in touch and all that gubbins? Absolutely. So get in touch with us via email email us at top10pods at hotmail.com do please follow us and give us a like give us a click on all social media platforms at top10pods please also if you'd like to come and help support the podcast at patreon.com forward slash top10pods where there's all sorts of rewards check out all the links via the link tree you can find the link in the show notes and do please 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 give us some feedback leave us some uh, ratings and reviews we'd love to hear from you and come and subscribe wherever you can wonderful and like neil said please go to apple Podcasts, and if you could leave us a review five stars obviously i mean anything (laughs) less than that what's the point uh it would be wonderful if you could do that for us that would be wonderful thank you so much rick thank you so much for joining us mate an absolute legend yeah pleasure as always thank you absolute legend thank you so much for your support as well and um we shall work out trying to get little balls <laughs> well, I mean, not saying I haven't already got little balls, uh, but you know, little, little, what am I trying to say? Hat trick balls for the people that have joined us three times, which you are now part of that club. So thank oh, you. I'm very honored. Thank you. And uh, next time, work out. I mean, well, uh, could we do US comedy moments? I'm I sure we well, could. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, I might. Good. I might That'd struggle to get 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless, Different uh, ones. The office. Uh, yeah, 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 that'll and, be unless it. Unless you yeah. can think of anything else, Rick, but please come back and join us again. I will. Um, and then we'll uh, have some more fun and, and try and work out a new um, impersonation for us. That would be great. <laughs> 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 this one's not good enough. We you talking about? Oh, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying that. Perfect. But, I that mean, one's perfect. I mean, you know, it might be nice for something else to add to your repertoire. You know, you can't keep churning out the same old one, can you? Um, anyway, Neil, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pav. Thank you very much, Rick. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. Yes. Nice one. Thank Indeed. you, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And let's start the countdown. Rick? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs>